Perhaps you have tried many things, but none seems to have been able to bring about your expected desires. Or has it seemed to you like there is no God or that God does not answer prayers? Or that He no longer answers prayers? If those are your experiences or your contemplations, well, I have got a message and good news for you. The good news is that you have got to learn and understand the technology that gets God to answer prayers. You have got to understand the technology that God used in making all things. You have got to understand how God wants you to act in order to get things done, like He has done and still does. You have got to understand that God wants all your needs and expectations met. He hasn't finished with you yet. Only you need to follow His steps and guidelines to get things done for yourself and others. Even if the worrying issues and situations have persisted or seem perennial. Hear what God has got to tell you in Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 18. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Surely there is an end to those sicknesses. There is an end to those marital delays. That deprivation and lack will undoubtedly come to an end. And I want to tell you that today is the appointed day, as you learn the means and technology to come out of it and to create your desires. What God is telling you is to stop getting panicked, stop being jittery and becoming unduly agitated, stop being hopeless, and don't consider how it is today to be how your tomorrow is going to be. Or how it is going to end up for you. This is what God is saying. He is saying that surely there is an end to all the present predicaments and unwanted situations in your life. He is saying that it is going to end in your favor and for your good. In Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, our Lord is saying, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. No matter how the situation looks or presents itself, the good news is that there is always an expiration date for every condition. And for you, my listeners, you will not end it in shame. You will not end it in disappointment. You will not end it in regret, and it is not going to end you. Instead, you are going to end it and come out of it triumphantly. In the name of Jesus Christ. So open your eyes to understanding to see what God is saying, what He is doing, what He wants you to do, and the part He wants you to play. Our Lord says in Isaiah chapter 43, from verses 19 to 20. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it, I will even make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert, to give drink to my people, my chosen. So child of God, cheer up and get ready for new things. You are walking out of that unwanted situation victorious. Expect it and be full of hope, for it will surely come to pass, and it won't delay or be delayed. Hear what God is saying in Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 14, he says. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you, if you find it, there is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. So you have only got to hope and believe him. For he says in Romans chapter 10, verse 11. The scripture says, no man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trusts in him, will, ever, be put to shame or be disappointed. And in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24, our Lord Jesus assures us that, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. So be rest assured, he will do as he has promised you. For he who promised is faithful. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. 
God's promises are sure, dependable, and reliable. You only need to learn and follow the dynamics and technology that will surely make it happen by coming boldly before Him with faith and the right confession. For He says in Matthew, chapter 12, verse 37, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. This simply means that we have to be positive and optimistic in our prayers and demands on God. For confession, they say, is the mother of possession. Because the majority of what we got or never got is the product of what we believe and what we confess. Never think about or confess what you don't want to see. Because, thought is the cause and confession is the mother of our manifestations. If you don't want it, don't think about it, and if you don't want to see it, don't confess it. And that was the pattern God used in creating all the things we can see. He'd start by thinking about it or imagining it, that is, first creating the images, and then declaring it, that's confession. Just as we saw in Genesis chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, The earth was without form, and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. That's incubation and declaration. And God having shown us the example, wants us to continue in the same manner to access our desires while aligning ourselves with Him in faith and prayer. This means that God has given us the power and the mandate to continue the works of creation. Just as He declared, Let there be light, and light manifested, and even so, He has taught us to use it to create what we desire and also uproot what we do not need or want in our lives. So you've got to say it boldly to see it. And in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28, God says, Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. You have got to speak it to have it done for you. You need not be worried about how it is going to be done. Leave that to God. Yours is to confess it in faith and see how God brings it to pass. He says in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Do you get that? That's what God expects from you. Make your declaration with confidence and see God bring it to fruition. In Job chapter 22, verse 28, he says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. So, child of God, why are you worrying? Why are you giving into depression? Is it not out of your faithlessness? And yet God has promised to take care of you. And he is waiting for you to get the right belief and make the right confession so that he can perfect those things that are giving you worries and concerns. For he says in Psalms 138, verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me, thy mercy, O Lord, endureth for ever, forsake not the works of thine own hands. God wishes and is willing to perfect everything concerning you, but you have got to believe and boldly profess your faith. In John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. Don't get troubled or dismayed, all you need to do is believe and declare it in faith and see God accomplish it for you. Never lose faith in God, especially now that you know what to do. As you repeat these prayers, that we are about to pray now, I see your long-awaited prayers answered. Your long-awaited desires accomplished. Your fears doused with miraculous solutions. 
Your health springing back again, and God intervening in those seemingly ugly situations. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for the grace to be alive and to witness a time like this. Forgive me for the times that I have despaired and made wrongful confessions instead of believing in you and making bold and rightful confessions. Father, indeed, I am sorry, forgive me, dear Lord, and I withdraw all the negative confessions and utterances that I have made against myself, my family, my household, and my loved ones. Indeed Lord, I made them in error and ignorance, forgive me, and restore my grace, glory and fortunes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I make a fresh confession of faith. It is well with me and my household, your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall continue to abide in faith in your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. My home is blessed, my marriage is blessed, my children are blessed, and my going out and coming in are blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. As the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell forever in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the stripes of the Lord, I have been healed, freed, and delivered from all diseases and afflictions of my enemies, the devil and his cohorts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I pray for you. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, hear dear Lord, the prayers of my listeners. Grant their heart's desires and do quick work to cause their expectations to be manifested. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you dear Lord, for answering, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.